Bro Stuff here. Welcome to Prophecy Insights with me, Bro Stuff. And uh, it's time for the monthly update. And I wanted to talk about integrity, honesty, and bearing false witness. You know, the Brett Kavanaugh uh, job interview, and that's all really it is, is a job interview. Uh, the shameful sham that our senators have allowed to take over the Supreme Court nomination process. I felt that it was necessary to discuss what God thinks about bearing false witness. Because if anything has occurred during these confirmation hearings, which again, parentheses, is a job interview. That's all it is. It's a lengthy job interview. Uh, the one common thread that keeps appearing in this process is bearing false witness, people lying, people not being truthful, people exaggerating, and in so doing, trying to deliberately ruin the life of a man that has established himself in the legal community as being upright, honest, and a man of integrity. It's shameful what's going on. And then what they've done is they've sucked in to this lying mechanism, this, this sham of a hearing, sucked in a lady, a woman, that they've used as a weapon, and that's what God calls it, a weapon to destroy now two human lives. The reputation of Brett Kavanaugh will forever be in question. And there is nothing he can do now to erase what millions of people think about him because of someone or a group of people bearing false witness. Yeah, I've thought a lot about this since it's been going on. And I thought today I'm going to have my peace with us and give you a biblical um, explanation. What does God think about bearing false witness? And he's got a lot to say about it. And I'm going to read to you uh, four scriptures, and then I'm going to read to you an uh, uh, article that was done at... Um, at uh, uh, let me get this right. I want to say the name right. Got Questions. Got Questions did a wonderful article on what does the Bible say about false witness. And I'm going to read this to you as well because it's just so wonderfully done. But I'm angry, um, and I don't want to turn this into political theater, this uh, Facebook Live. But I'm angry because the truth is not being told. The truth is being put on the altar of let's just win a political battle no matter the cost and no matter who it destroys. So let's go to the Bible and let's look first at Exodus 20, 16. Exodus 20, verse 16 in the New King James Version. You shall not, shall not, bear false witness against your neighbor. That's number one. Doesn't say maybe, doesn't say sometimes you can. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Now, I'm going to go out on the limb and say this. I said it in my earlier post. Uh, on my profile. You can read it. I said, I think that if you call yourself a believer in Jesus Christ, 
and you do not see through this, then I've got, personally, uh, if, if I were still pastoring and you were in my fellowship, you and I would probably have a counseling session. And I would want to know why in the world you don't side with the biblical definition of lying, because that's what we've seen. Um, number two, Psalm 27, 12. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. This is uh, King David talking. For false witnesses have risen, risen against me in such as breathe out violence. So God compares bearing a false witness to being violent. A violent attack against someone who may be innocent. you got to remember, if I make an accusation against you, that doesn't automatically turn you into a victim. You have to go into a court of law or go before a magistrate, and you've got to plead your case and present evidence to support uh, why my accusation is true or not true. I have to go into a court of law and support my accusation with evidence. If I don't have enough evidence, the judge will throw it out. The judge will go, I'm not even going to hear the case. Get out of here. Go get the right evidence. Bring something to me and I'll reconsider. Okay? Look. Jesus hung on a cross because people falsely accused him. Our own Lord and Savior was falsely accused and ended up having to go to the cross, die an innocent man because he was falsely accused. It's dangerous to falsely accuse people. That's why God tells us don't get involved in gossip. Judgment, it's not to, up to us to judge people and condemn people. That's why we're supposed to refrain from it, because it sent our Lord to his death. And, and your words and my words, they cut like a knife into people's hearts and souls. We have to be very careful. The book of James, reread it, talks about the tongue. The tongue is a weapon when it's not tamed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 25, 18. You can tell I'm really worked up over this. I am. I'm disgusted. What I've seen on TV, I've watched it all. I'm disgusted by it. And the thing I'm disgusted with is that the people in leadership in this country aren't siding with God and with moral clarity. This, this whole thing should have never happened. The senator should have heard the accusations privately. If there wasn't enough uh, evidence to bring it forward, it should have been squashed in private and never made the light of day. Uh, Proverbs 25, 18. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. So... Let's look now at Exodus 23, 1, and then I'm going to read you this article that was done by PhDs and doctors of theology, not little guys like me, you know. Exodus 23, 1, you shall not circulate a false report. Isn't that what's been happening in our country? The circulation of a false accusation. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. A man's reputation hangs in the balances, and we're willing as a nation to rely on accusations that can't be backed up to trash this man's reputation 
Seriously, is this really happening in the United States of America where the presumption of innocence is guaranteed to you and me in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution? The presumption of innocence. Look, if you watched any of these hearings, as you're looking at the TV to our left, uh, behind Judge Kavanaugh's uh, shoulder, left shoulder, it would be his right or left, was sitting his dear mom, his mother, who was a federal court judge. And she was in tears and the stress on her face hearing false accusations made against her son. How would you like it if your son or daughter was treated like that? Accused of the most heinous crimes without any credible witnesses to support it. I wouldn't want my flesh and blood to go through that. She, how, how dare these senators put that mother through that? I mean, they should have apologized to her for what they were doing to her son. It's awful. That's right, Sandy. It's awful. It's shameful that in the United States of America, we should see this kind of corrupt behavior. All right, now let's go to the article. What does the Bible say about a false witness? Here's the answer. Bearing false witness is mentioned many times in the Bible exclusively as something bad. You shall not bear false witness against a neighbor is the ninth of the Ten Commandments that Moses brought back with him from his encounter with God on Mount Sinai. That's Exodus 20.16. I read that a moment ago. False witness or spreading a false report is associated with being allied with the wicked. Exodus 23.1. Willing to do violence to others, Psalm 27, 12. A sowing of discord among brothers, Proverbs 6, 19. The Bible calls bearing false witness lying, Proverbs 14, 5. And compares a man who bears false witness against his neighbor to a violent weapon. Lies harm people. And that's Proverbs 25, 18. A false witness is one who stands up and swears, swears before others that something untrue is true, especially with the intention of hurting someone else or ruining his reputation. This happened to David, Psalm 27, 12. Jesus uh, sorry, uh, Jesus and Stephen, Acts 6:13, Matthew 26, 60, Mark 14:56. When the wicked Queen Jezebel wished to procure a vineyard for her sulking husband, King Ahab, she employed two false witnesses. Naboth, the rightful owner of the vineyard was seated in an honorable place on a day of fasting. But then two scoundrels came, sat opposite him, and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. First Kings 21.13 What the scoundrels said against Naboth was absolutely untrue. They were bearing false witness with impunity and with the queen's blessing. As a result, an innocent man was killed when a person is righteous and his enemies can find nothing with him to blame him. Bearing false witness is a common weapon. And uh, I'll finish up with this uh, last paragraph. The lies told by a false witness come from the sinful human heart along with murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, slander, 
and evil thoughts. Matthew 15, 19. Jesus said that man is defiled by these evil things that come from the heart. The only possible cure for an evil heart that bears false witness is to receive a new, pure heart, which can only be given by God, Ezekiel 36, 26. When a person is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, he will be like a fresh spring or fruitful tree or a budding vine bursting with good things. John 7, 38, Psalm 1, 1 through 6, John 15, 4 through 5. The old is gone and the new takes its place, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Those who are in Christ have a new heart that speaks the truth. Each of us must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to our neighbor, Ephesians 4, 25. A person who bears false witness is controlled by the flesh rather than by the Spirit of God and should repent of that sin and turn to Christ. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him, a lying tongue, a false witness who breathes out lies. Proverbs 6, 16-19 Look, the Christians in this country that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God should be in, should be just, their voices should be heard all over the land. Not, not to, to support one person over the other. What about us standing up and demanding that our political leaders do away with their sinful behavior and start taking the Ten Commandments at face value for what they say and what God demands? I'm not saying that we should become legalistic in our approach to God today. But I am saying that the Ten Commandments are God's moral values of how a nation and a life should conduct themselves. Our voices should be heard. I am making mine heard today. If you don't want to get on Facebook Live and make yours heard, then share this with your friends. And let my voice be yours, if you agree. If you disagree, disagree all you want. Comment below, and I'd be more than happy to read your disagreement with what I'm saying. But all that I'm really saying is that what we've seen happening in the Senate is is really a unhealthy way to conduct business. You never let a false accusation uh, be brought forward to destroy another life. You never allow that. That would never be allowed in a court of law. You don't have enough evidence, the judge won't hear you. And look, God's going to judge all of us, right? Now, God has, uh, uses the same principles of law to judge you and me. He's going to look at our lives and look for the evidence in our lives and in our hearts that we believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And for the sake of all of us, I pray he finds a preponderance of evidence so that he can say, welcome, come on in to the rest that's been purchased for you by my son. Will God find the evidence in you to say that you're a believer in his son? Will he find it in me? I hope so. But that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to look over our life. 
And he's going to look for this. Did you call upon the name of Yeshua, of Jesus? Did you ask forgiveness for your sins? Did you forsake your sin? And did you do an about face and run to Jesus and then live out your faith? God's going to look for that evidence in our lives. I pray he finds it. And I pray you write your senators today. Write them. Send them an email and tell them how disgusted you are with the fact that I, they allowed false testimony that couldn't be corroborated that they allowed that into the Senate. Tell them how you feel about it and let your voice be heard. And if you did that, and I see some of you are saying you did, then congratulations for being a good citizen. And God is happy when you make your voice heard like that. That pleases the Lord because he's given us freedoms in this country to speak up. And we should take advantage of it. So, this is how I feel about the whole thing. And I feel that many of our Christian brothers and sisters are going to fall into the trap of taking sides rather than seeing what the Lord has to say about truth and lies. And, and you know what? If lies are the basis for the argument, I have to reject it. I, I have to. So anyway, I just wanted to share my heart with you, and I, if you, if you, uh, I don't want to say if you agree per se, but, but if you think there's value to what I'm sharing today, share it with people you, you know, okay? Let's get the word out there. But uh, this is bro stuff, um, not a prophecy update today, and by the way, I want to just say this. The Lord has been speaking to me about prophecy and pointing people to Jesus. And I think we, we've gotten out of balance in the Christian community. We are now uh, doing, a, there's a lot of prophecy teaching going on, prophecy opinion, prophecy news. And I think the pendulum has swung way out of balance. You know, I was one of the only people back in the year 2000 doing online reporting like this. And I I did it online in the year 2000 and created my own little group. And we had conversations back and forth and I gave out my opinion and my thoughts and read scripture or typed it out and you could chat back and forth to one another. Well, that was in the year 2000. And it was me and by myself. No one was doing it. And then around the year 2004, uh, I started seeing more people getting involved on the internet. And now I think we're at a place where we're talking so much now about biblical prophecy that we're forgetting that Jesus, Jesus, and in him crucified is the most important thing we could be talking about. There is a place for Bible prophecy, yes, and, and bringing up our awareness of what's going on around us. But we always have to point back to the Lord and why it's so important to walk with him. And so the, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to my heart about steering the conversation back to Jesus more than I ever have before. So you're when I do my updates like this, you're going to hear a lot about walking with the Lord, faith, and and the tenets of our of of scripture. You're going to be hearing a lot more about that uh in the days to come. And I just think where we're at in our nation and in the world we need to point people to Jesus Christ like never before. 
Because that's what people need. They need him. No matter how bad or good things get, we, we need Jesus in our lives. That's just all there is to it. I mean, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit it. He's a crutch. He's my crutch. He's my superhero. If it wasn't for him, I would hate, I, I would dread to think where my life might be. So, if you don't know the Lord, right? If you're hearing this and you haven't committed your heart to him, go to brosteph.com. Scroll down the page a bit and you'll see how to ask Christ, Yeshua, into your life. Um, there's a little article to read and there's two little short videos. Take you about eight minutes to go through everything. And then ask Christ into your life and join the family of believers. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your whole life. I want to encourage you to do that and to do it today. The Bible says today's the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not in a minute, not in 10 minutes. Right now, if you're hearing this and you don't know the Lord, or you're a Christian and you have fallen away and you're out of fellowship with the Lord, come back. Come back. Jesus wants you to be part of the fold. And if you got questions or maybe you got a serious life issue and you want to talk to someone about it, give me a call. Talk to me about it. Comment in my Facebook or do it on Messenger uh, or call me on the telephone. I think my phone number is on my profile. Give me a call. And I'll be more than happy to pray for you. And I want to leave you with this. Uh, Cameron, a friend of ours, he's the son of a friend of ours, got in a very bad car accident. And, uh, you know, he may need some surgeries. He's, you know, he got hurt pretty bad in this car accident. We'd like you to pray for him and lift him up. Cameron, he's 21 years old, just getting his life started. And he's in the hospital. His parents are really concerned for him. So please pray for Cameron. And ask the Lord to heal him and raise him up and make his, his recovery fast. I know everybody that follows me on these uh, Facebook lives, I know you're all prayer warriors. I know you are. I see it happen all the time. I ask you to pray for somebody and man, thousands of people start praying. So pray for Cameron. Ask your prayer groups to pray for Cameron. And uh, then I'll report back to you what his uh, dad shares with me on how his progress is going. So here I'm going to give a wave. There, I gave a wave to Doreen. Uh, Sandy, thank you for being here. Thank you all. God bless you. I'll see you again on another Prophecy Insights with me bro stuff. Keep looking up. Bye for now.